everyone, Renee here, and I am joined by two of my daughters, Mackenzie and Michaela. They want to join me for this video because we are making gluten-free and dairy-free crepes and the best crepes you've ever had. If you do not have any dietary restrictions, you can totally make these with regular flour and dairy milk and dairy butter. We are just making it that because we have, they are both celiac and so is my husband and one of my daughters is allergic to dairy. So we make these amazing recipes that everybody can eat and I promise you, you won't miss the gluten or the dairy. They're amazing. Some of the best crepes we've ever had. And we're gonna show you just how simple it is. We are going to make it all in my blender. Here I have a Vitamix, but any blender would completely work. Make sure it's big enough. Today's video, we are going to make a double batch, but I will put the link below to my website, which has the written recipe, and I will put the res written recipe in both a single batch and a double batch, but because there's six of us in our family and they like leftovers, so we typically make the double batch because then they can eat it the next day and so forth, okay? So let me just kind of tell you what ingredients we have so you know. So we are using this butter today. It is the Dairy Free Miyoko's butter. If you do not have a dairy allergy, this is the butter that I would recommend, Kerrygold. We are also going to be using almond milk, but once again, you can use any milk of choice at all. I even think like oat milk, coconut milk would all work. Now, if you did coconut milk, no, it probably would have a little bit more of a coconut flavor to it, but you could choose any milk that you would like. We also have four eggs here and we have flour. Let me, oh, I, oh let me grab the flour so I can show you which one that we use. All gluten-free flour acts differently in recipes. So I cannot recommend other gluten-free flours because we have not tried them, but this is the one that I do recommend and I love it. So if you're making this gluten-free, you'll want to pick up this flour. Like I said, you can try other flours. I just haven't tested them, so I don't wanna say they're gonna be good or bad. This one works. Or you can simply substitute for all-purpose regular flour. That would work just as well. Total up to if you do not have a gluten sensitivity, allergy, or celiac, you can use regular flour. We also have granulated white sugar. And then we also have melted butter. So you'll have to melt your butter. And I showed you the butter that we used, but you'll have that melted. I have vanilla extract and some salt. That is it. That's all of the ingredients and we're gonna throw it all in here. So let us get to work. Okay, so one thing I always do is I crack the eggs first, simply because I have learned the hard way that if you crack them later, it splashes up at you. And that just is not always really nice. So since we are doubling it, we are using four eggs. So you're gonna just place four eggs right in your blender. If you're not doubling it, you just... if you're not doubling it, it's just two eggs, okay? Yep, good, that was good thing. But so, like I said, I will link down below my website right to this recipe, and I will put both the single and the double depending on how much you want to make. They do, you know, the batter does sit well in the fridge for just a day or two. And if you're making gluten-free, you know, gluten batter actually sits really well the next couple days because the flour is able to absorb the liquid. But just so you know, you can completely keep them in. I am then going to add the melted butter. So in this step, everything except the flour goes right into your blender. So you're not gonna put the flour in for this first step here, but everything else. So now this was 84 grams of melted butter. But remember, this is the double recipe. And also in the recipe, I will not only give you weight, I will also give you cup measurements as well, okay? If it's a... Yep, it'd be 42 if it's a single. They're working on their math here. Okay, and then we will also add our sugar. So again, this is 100 grams of sugar. And then we're going to add our milk. Now I'm going to weigh the, my milk. It's 24 ounces for the double, which means it would be 12, 12 ounces for a single recipe. Okay, so I am simply putting my scale on fluid ounces, and then we're just going to pour it right in there. I keep it easy. So as you know, if you've been watching me for a while, I do all of my recipes by weight for a couple of reasons. It's more accurate because a cup of flour could weigh, you know, range anywhere from 20 to 50 plus or minus, depending on how you scoop your cup. I need 24. And then also, also, it's really helpful that I don't have other things to clean up. So I don't take any measuring cups out or anything like that. We're getting to 24, sweetheart. It is perfect. No, it's not. It's at 16. 16. 
Oh, he looks like a hunter without the dot. Oh, oh, oh. So she's my, confused no, because... From my angle, I can't see the dot. Okay, so it's right now I'm at 18.4 ounces. So they're confused. They were thinking I was in the hundreds because from their angle, they couldn't see the decimal point. So we're almost there. So that's why they're looking at me like, Mom, you're crazy. Why are you still going? We're almost there. But yes, yeah, so that's why I, that is why you will notice in all of my recipes, I am always using grams or ounces because it's just the most accurate way to bake, cook, any of that. Go ahead. There we go, 24 ounces. Okay, so just like that, that is all that we do. And now we're gonna blend this up and then we will add our flour. So first you wanna blend this up nice and well, and we will be right back. All right, so this is all mixed up. You can see you just want to make you just turn the blender on, make sure that it gets all whipped really well, and you, there will be some bubbles at the top, some foam, which is totally fine. And then we are going to just pour our flour right in. This is already measured out, but hold on, that's not going to work. I feel like it's going to become a mess and just go everywhere. So I'm going to use my spoon. And you are just simply placing that right on top and then it will go back into the blend blender and you'll blend that up. It's just, I just feel like if I keep dumping, it's just gonna plop and go everywhere. I'm trying to keep it as clean as possible. Now I will tell you, normally I do not pour my ingredients into bowls like this. So like what I was talking to you earlier, I keep, without having measuring cups or anything, it's very clean. So normally it literally all just gets poured right in here. Keep it simple. And then we're gonna place the lid back on and we are just going to mix it up one final time. And this time you just, again, just make sure that all of your flour gets mixed into there and that's it. Perfect. So I'll show you what it looks like. Just like that, all mixed up. I do see a little flour on the edge. So then I just take my spatula and just make sure that that gets in there like so. And your recipe is done. So now you have to let it sit for about 10 minutes. So Mackenzie's gonna put her timer on and she's gonna have it sit for 10 minutes and then we will show you the next step. But before we go on to the cooking part, I just wanted to show you a few things. So because they were diagnosed with celiac about a, almost a year ago, it'll be a year in August, and we, you know, you have to use special pans if you have someone in your family with celiac because the gluten can be stuck to the pan. So I simply use just a nonstick pancake pan is what we call it in our house. And that is what I will use. And I'll show you how I kind of swirl it around to give it the crepe effect. Now, we do actually have crepe pans in this house. So I will buy a gluten-free crepe pan. I have not yet. This is what they look like. You can get them on Amazon. I'll link them down below. And so when I make crepes for the big girls, they will eat these gluten-free ones. I don't even make gluten crepes anymore, but they can use these pans because it's okay if they pick up any of the gluten from the pans. But this is what a crepe pan looks like. And they have lots of options on Amazon or at the store, anything like that. But just so you know, I want to show you that. So in about 10 minutes, we will get back with you and show you how the cooking process takes place. Okay, we're back. We, it has now sat for 10 minutes. And like I said, you can make this and make it later in the day. You could even make it the day before. Just make, let your, make sure that it sits for at least 10 minutes. I wanted to tell you that in the previous video, I forgot the salt and the vanilla. We did add that, so don't forget that. It is a teaspoon and a half of vanilla and three fourths of a teaspoon of salt, okay? Just wanted to let you know why I forgot that all of a sudden I was like, oh no, we forgot the salt and the vanilla. So make sure that those get added in. And now we have had our pan heating up here. I am going to move my camera so that I can put it on the pan so you can see how I do that swirl. So give me just a moment. Okay, so the pan has been heating up. I have it on medium and I have just a little scooper here. It's a fourth of a cup and I'm going to just take a scoop and you place it on your pan and I'm gonna take two scoops here of this and then here's where the swirl comes in. And you just lift it up and you swirl it around just like that and that is it. So now you'll just let it cook like that. Now, like I said, if you had a crepe pan, it might be a little more perfect of a circle, but because we're working with this, but we can make it work. You don't need a special pan. You just swirl it. You want it to be a little thinner. So we're gonna let this cook. And then I will take my spatula here 
and you will start to see that the edges start to bubble a little bit, okay? And you're gonna slowly start to lift them up and just kind of see where you're at. So it's obviously not ready to flip. And then you will just simply flip it over. And you can see the bubbles in the middle. So the most of the cooking takes place on this first side. And then the second side, it just kind of finishes off there. And sometimes they do break on us depending on how thin I make them. It happens. Let me get this one made up and we'll show you the finished result. Okay, one crepe is done. You can see it here. And she, Michaela, here, this is her crepe here. She's going to eat it just as is, not put anything on it. Mackenzie likes to put some Nutella on hers. Now, my older girls like to put cookie butter from Trader Joe's that has gluten, which is why neither one of them do it. I like just a little bit of butter and a little powdered sugar. So whatever you like in your crepe, you, you know, the possibilities are endless. You could put any topping that you would like, but that is what, so they come out nice and thin, but they are absolutely delicious. I better keep an eye on Mackenzie's cooking over here. She told me, she goes, don't forget about mine. And I told her that I won't. So you just have to just, like I said, just lift the edges up. And we do every once in a while have them break. The key is to make sure, like I said, that it does most of its cooking on the first side, and then it helps with the flipping process. If it's not done enough, and then when you try to flip it, that's usually when the breakage happens. Mm. Or if it's too thin of a crepe, then that rips as well. So all these little tips, and you'll find them as you go and what works for you. You could also even make them smaller, which would be easier to flip. So you could make a bunch mm. of smaller crepes. The bigger they are, the more difficult it is to flip. So all those little tips, how are they? Michaela gives it thumbs up. This breakfast in our house is probably the number one requested, at least by Michaela and Mackenzie, I would say. So we love them. Oh, I, that was a nice flip there too. So perfect. Like I said, you just want to make sure that it's most of it's quick on the first side. What actually made us come up with these to make them gluten-free was the fact that we like to go to the original Pancake House and they used to love their 49ers, which are similar to crepes. And so then I was like, you know what? Let's figure this out. And we're making crepes at home. And so I'm like, let's make this gluten-free. And we did, and they're phenomenal, and they couldn't get any better. So please give this recipe a try. Mackenzie is coming up right here, so don't worry about her. I'm gonna grab her plate here. She will get a crepe, and she is going to top hers with Nutella. So here's hers here, and she's gonna to top it and roll it, I think, is what she's gonna do. So that's a lot of times what and what these girls do is so she's gonna spread the Nutella in the center here and then she's going to roll it up. Sometimes it gets bunched. Yes, my crepes may not be the prettiest, but that's okay. What matters is how delicious they are. And Michaela can sometimes eat five or six of them. Sometimes it just goes, goes, goes. So make sure that you make them. I will link the written recipes down below. So you'll just head on over to my blog, fitformotherhood.com. The recipes will be linked there. I will give you the measurements, the weights, so you'll have cups and grams and ounces, that kind of stuff. I will do a single and a double, so you'll have it all. So click the link down below, head on over there, make these. Let me know in the comments below if you are enjoying our gluten-free recipes. We did a chocolate chip cookie one a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, I don't know. We did my homemade chocolate chip gluten-free cookie one, delicious, and we have some other recipes like that. So stay tuned, more gluten-free recipes because we are always testing things out in the kitchen because I want to make their favorite foods gluten-free. I don't want them to miss out on anything. So have a great rest of your day. Like, subscribe down below, and once again, just let me know what you wanna see. Goodbye, everyone.